very nervous speaking in front of all of you because you probably saw me naked at the party last night. Uh, and if you haven't been to my party, yeah, well, yeah, you missed the puking and stuff like that. All right, this is uh, the good and bad about stream media. I'm going to show you basically how we're going to steal media and how we're going to protect ourselves from being stolen from. Um, who am I? I'm Tommy Pickles. I'm originally from New York. I live in L.A. now. I'm single, so any girls out there who want to buy me a drink later? Been arrested and jailed. I only have 50 minutes. I have to break through fast. He's also a very tight guy, so any guys who want to date him? Definitely, definitely a bonus. Um, I promise you a spot the Fed. Uh, we're actually running behind, so we're going to skip the spot the Fed. Uh, we'll do it next, I promise. Just And we'll, we'll take you all over to the next tent where we're going to do it. Uh, once again, I'm doing the PSA, which is to thank all of you for your patience and uh, for being understanding for the problems that we're facing, coordinating, uh, the, the convention with the, the new, uh, not so much new, but the, the added restrictions that we weren't aware of in previous conventions, uh, specifically with the fire department. We lost about 200 seats because we lost the roof tent. We thought we were going to get those 200 seats back. As it turns out, there were some miscommunications as to exactly how many people could be where. We didn't find that out actually until about Tuesday of this week. So we'd already submitted our plans to the fire department, everything had been approved, so on and so forth. It was too late to change them. Now, obviously, this is a little bit different than what I was telling you before. Reason being is I actually got a phone call from the chief fire marshal last night, a very, very nice lady with the, with the county, with Clark County, who uh, spent quite a bit of time with us working through the issues that we felt were unfair, working through the issues that we felt were inappropriate. And, and we had a very good meeting of the minds. We, we both sides apologized. Both sides realized that there were miscommunication issues. The, the fire department was not actually out to get us, which was one of the perceptions that we initially had. And uh, once again, you know, it, it's for your safety. We don't want a repeat of Chicago or Cincinnati, where 200 people got trampled and about 60 people got burned to death. So that's why we're doing it. It sucks to be outside. The lines are hot and long. We are trying desperately to get the water that's over here moved out to a more strategic location where you can get to it. Uh, we're also making sure there's security in the water so you don't get something nasty that makes you think your testicles are speaking to you. <laughs> or ovaries if you're female. Or in some cases, if you're female and your testicles are speaking to you, that's fine. Uh, and once again, we thank you. You've made this a very good convention for us this year. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you've... Uh, You've really helped us out, and, and we really appreciate that, and we hope that, uh, that you're having a good time. And uh, we hope that we can help you have the best time that you can, and that we ask you again to please bear with us and be understanding that, uh, you know, we're, we're working within the constraints that we have to for your safety, but that ultimately we want you to have a good time here. Please also understand this is a pretty much all-volunteer organization. No one here is, is compensated thousands and thousands of dollars for doing what they're doing. Everybody here volunteers. It's, it's a labor of love from us for you guys, for the community to, to come out and, and have a good time. You know, if this was a SANS convention or, a, um, or an RSA convention where you're spending two grand, three grand for, for a convention, obviously things would be a lot different. You know, you're spending $75. Is, is that expensive to some? Certainly. Uh, is it cheap to others? Yes. It's, it's all a matter of perspective. But that's kind of the number we need going forward to be able to put this on without losing too much money. Uh, Black Hat is, de is definitely separate from DEF CON. Jeff puts on DEF CON, like I said, for the community. Jeff's full-time job is Black Hat. This is the once a year kind of bash that he throws to thank everybody in the security community, both the underground and professionally, for, uh, for, for being who you are and, and basically being good people. And again, we want to thank you for that, and we really appreciate that. So again, please bear with us. Uh, we're, we're still trying to work out some of the problems. We had a double line forming today. I'm not sure why. We're going to get that corrected. Uh, and uh, some of the other little foibles. There are rebroadcasts of yesterday's presentations. They'll be going on in the Apollo chill-out room. There are 200 seats in there now where you can go and there's a big screen monitor and catch some of the more popular presentations. 
Uh, there will be repeats of the presentations throughout the convention. As we get them online, there will be copies of all the presentations on the DEF CON uh, media server. They're not high res, but they are for free, and they have been for free for every DEF CON that, that, that's going on. I think we have up until from four on up right now. Uh, all the slides are there, all the, the stream of videos, so on and so forth. If you want a very good, high quality, well done version of the speakers, Sound of Knowledge, who is handling the audio video for us right now, has a very reasonable uh, reasonable copy of videotapes for you for that. So again, we thank you. I'm going to turn it back over to Tommy. All right. Um, thanks, Priest, for the announcement. Uh, again, this is the good and bad stream of media, how we're going to steal it and how we can protect it. I'm um, going to bang through a lot of these slides really fast because i got like 50 slides in it. A lot of info here. But uh, who am I? I'm Tommy Pickles. I'm originally from New York. I live in L.A. I'm singled. Uh, I was arrested and jailed. If you want to hear the story about that, uh, to buy me a beer or something. And I'm media whore. I love to be on TV. So, and I like to drink. So if you buy me a beer, I'll explain that too. <laughs> Qualifications. Yeah, I've, I've been in uh, the business for about 12 years. I've worked in the Coast Guard on computer radar systems and actually uh, weapon systems. Um, I developed uh, solutions for a digital club network. I run Moloch.org, Moloch.tv, and we have streaming media there that is totally insecure, so you can go grab it, but it's all watermarked anyway, so I'll find you later. Um, and I always hack TiVos and stuff. Some of you might have seen me on my TiVo talks. What the hell is streaming media? Okay, streaming media is any multimedia, basically, that's sent through a protocol like HTTP or progressive networks or RTSP or MMS. Um, MMS being Microsoft and RTSP is real-time streaming protocol. Common types of streaming media, of course, are the real network, Shoutcast, Ice, Icecast, Windows Media. I, there's a lot more out there, and I'm only going to touch upon some of them because, like I said, uh, we're short on time, and we only have 50 minutes here. Media players. The basic media players, we're going to talk about real player, Windows player, QuickTime, and Winamp. Um, good things about real. Um, lots of formats. It'll play practically on anything. And they developed this thing called SureStream technology, which is basically encapsulating multiple streams in one stream file. So if you <clears throat> drop down in speed, it'll actually uh, go manage your bandwidth. It'll go down to another stream of that file. Therefore, you don't buffer a lot. And then um, you do have uh, the full screen aspect, which is great when you're like watching porn or something like that. <laughs> you know, like you can't really you know, have fun with a postage stamp. <laughs> MPEG-4 technology, that's the newest thing that they got in it, but it's through the NVivo plugin, and I don't really understand why they're using a third-party plugin for MPEG-4 content. You know, uh, there's a lot of development out there, but it seems like MPEG-4 costs the most of everything. Um, the Real Player Plus version does cost money. It seems like they're just Real is just like a commerce engine with this real one and CNN.com. I mean, everyone deserves to get paid, and I would like each one of you guys to give me a buck when you leave here. But um, <laughs> the sole purpose seems to be commerce. Um, it, and the, the, it hasn't played on Linux um, for like 8 and 9, but they updated the codec, so it's still, still the old player on Linux. Windows Media. Windows Media is pretty good. I do a lot of stuff in Windows Media. It's included in Windows, which is the greatest part about it. How, how are you going to monopolize if you don't include it with your operating system, right? So um, it's skinnable. It, it, you can do full screen in it. And um, basically the large demographic, because they're dominating the industry with just including it with the operating system and an encoder with Windows 2000 Pro and XP Pro. Um, Wine will actually support it under Linux, but only version 6.4. I've tried to install it on Linux for like... Um, you know, the newer players, and it just doesn't work. Windows Media does suck because of digital rights management. This is a little watermark that we all put on our files so that if you take it, I will find out you have it, or it won't play on your computer unless you're authorized. Some uh, versions of DRM are like uh, Microsoft Library, I think it is, on the, the PDAs. They actually watermark a lot of their stuff with DRM, so you can't play it on a lot of players. Um, there's no consistency between players. If between real six, seven, eight, and now nine, things have changed so much that you have to update codecs every time you play a video. It's so wrong of them. Um, and then one day I actually 
put real on my system with like a lot of the video stuff I do and it corrupted my codecs because they use shared libraries and it screwed up my video, my Avid machine. QuickTime Player. QuickTime Player supports MPEG-4 and can edit files in its Windows and Mac. But um, it's not supported on Unix. Uh, you could use Wine, but it's kind of like resource intensive. Um, Plugger works for the browser. Um, full screen's only in paid versions, which I don't know where they get off doing that. And then uh, editing is only in the paid version, which, you know, like, hey, if you want to edit movies, you should actually pay for your stuff. But, you know, why even put the feature in there? The servers. Servers, uh, real Windows. Darwin is the, the QuickTime server. And Shoutcast and Icecast. Those are basically the same thing, you know, when you go online and go to mp3.com, et cetera. Um, real server, it's free. Eh, sort of. Um, you can get a license that's actually one year, I think, now for 10 users at one megabit. So if you're like planning on serving office stuff inside your office on a LAN, that's probably not going to work out for you if you have more than 10 people connecting to your server, especially if you're making 256K streams. I mean, you're going to reach that meg in no time. Um, it's multi platform, it runs from a command line. Nothing's cooler than having a server that you can actually start from a command line. Whoever thought of that? You know, years of development in Unix, and all of a sudden, you know, Windows Media thinks you have to run Windows just to have like a Windows server. Uh, you can run this from command line, it's really cool and gives you a lot of diagnostics and a lot of logging. And it's widely used. Um, yes, it has been exploited. Um, I'm sorry, I I'm losing my place here. Okay, uh, QuickTime server, it's a free server. Um, but it's not easy to serve stuff. This, like, they made it really free and they said, yeah, you can serve anything through Darwin. But you had to get, write these class files, <laughs> which no one told you how to write them. And you went up to these boards to figure out and everyone go, well, I figured it out, but I'm not telling you. It's like, <laughs> now I feel like I'm talking to myself. Um, <laughs> so like, um, and it hasn't been exploited. Anything that's on a, a server system that you do nothing but serve stuff off of, it's going to be exploited. Microsoft Media Server. This is my favorite. <laughs> it's free with Windows 2000 Advanced Server. It's like how, <laughs> like, that's domination. You know, trying to give people a free media server. Like, um, it has so many exploits to it, and it doesn't log for crap, and I'll show you. It's like... <laughs> I was like hacking my own servers, which kind of seems stupid. You know, like, don't you have a job? Don't you go to the beach? Um, but I hacked with no server. Um, Shoutcast and Icecast, these servers are really cool. Um, they've done a lot of updating, but you can actually like stream your MP3s and act like you're an internet radio station. That's really cool. Um, but it's been exploited and again. All these things have been exploited. Okay, this is the simplest way we're going to steal media now. Um, one, of the one of the things people do is they want to put their movies on their website. Be like, uh, this is Tommy Pickles getting naked in the party and I'm going to embarrass him on my website, defcon.org or something. The, uh, people will just upload it to their website and hyperlink it. Well, that's not secure at all because A, it doesn't stream well. B, you could just right click on it and go save as, and then you stole in their media. I mean, if you, if you wanted people to save your media, that's cool and everything like that, but if you're looking for security, that's not the way to do it, because I could actually go through the HTML. Um, the ways you can actually protect this, because if this is the only way you can serve media, is actually um, use HT access files. Limit who sees your website or who can click on a link for your videos or use JavaScript or like I have people using J2EE and stuff like that to protect files. It's really good. JavaScript will actually hide all the links and not let you like do view source. Uh, of course there's a lot of ways to get around that but I mean we're talking about limiting the demographic security through obscurity. Okay, basically if you want to stream it cheap you can create these files, like batch files, like an ASX file or a, you know, M3U file and stuff like that, and put that on your website. So if someone right clicks on it, they're just going to see, you know, like a little text file that they downloaded. They're not going to actually have the file. Now they can open up that file and then see um, what the link actually is and post that into a browser. But um, this is one way you can actually stream files, like actually make a little batch file um, that's a .asx and just references the uh, 
the WMV file or ASF file. Uh, ex those are just ex brief examples. Um, getting around the HTML. Now, this is what you get into when you start going after the media. Like, um, I've stolen video from techtv.com and cnet.com just to see how good they are. And, you know, like it was just stupid. You know, no one protects it. Um, all you have to do is siphon through HTML files and, like, look for anywhere they have uh, basically dot .mov or dot .asf, asx or something like that. And you're going to find, like, they usually put embed tags and stuff like that. And you basically you can use, like, wget and, uh, like, or linux-dump. Actually, on the, in the program CD or on the site, um, there should be actually tools for Windows if you don't use Linux, too. I have, like, wget for Windows and... Um, a bunch of other files on there that will help you do this. But um, either way, you have to just download the local file, look at the, if it's .rmm or .asx, and then look inside the file and see what it is, and then just make even an HTML file on your desktop that you can actually right-click on your desktop and download the file. Okay, siphoning HTML. This is uh, basically the way that uh, if you go through the, the, the web stuff, you'll actually see uh, different p stuff in the page source, such as MPEG and stuff like that. Um, if you can't right-click, this is the most useful thing. If you can't right-click or view source on a page, there's like that little Windows key on your keyboard. You can actually push that and it overrides everything that the browser's telling you to do. So it'll actually pop up that shortcut menu and then you just mouse and go view source and it'll pop up. So Windows keys sometimes do serve a purpose. Uh, you can find, uh, you could like find where you're getting the video from, but just playing it. And if you use a sniffer, like uh, Iris is pretty good, um, you could actually see where the, the video is coming from, and it's going to give you the hyperlink, and then you could just plug that into your WGET and steal the video. Um, or you could do TCP dump. I would like to cover TCP dump, uh, but time is really short because there's a lot of things you can do with TCP dump and do like VVV and like basically look at hex codes. But if you want to talk about that at the bar, after four drinks, it gets really hysterical. <laughs> okay, um, media from media servers. A lot of the big media servers like MTV, they will use a big media server. They'll try to protect themselves against this. There's ways to steal around these things. Um, real media, like first of all, is probably the best um, logging engine um, just because they log everything. I, I, they log how ma much you watch the thing, how many times you've watched it, different things like that, so it's really cool. It's a TCP connection and then it'll stream UDP stuff. Um, but the TCP connection will not like close until you like log off basically or stop watching the video. But uh, we'll cover that, how, like how I'm stealing from real media too. Um, Streambox VCR. This program, I'm telling you, is like the best program in the world that like they keep on developing it. Basically, it, it will grab any real media and they patch it so it could get like past real nine helix security and it basically fakes a real player. And so like when it connects up to the server, it'll just report, yeah, someone's just watching the file. Meanwhile, I'm ripping it at like one meg speed and like it says it's reporting like 56K stream to them. It's just really cool dynamic program, and it keeps on getting better every day, uh, unless those guys die, of course. Uh, this is basically what Streambox looks like, and it, it's really simple, and you just like go, like go through, and it'll show you when it's downloading the actual files and how fast it's downloading and stuff like that. Um, it's really easy to configure. You're like, here's the location I want to download from. As you can tell, it's a media file from like, what is it, streamingmediashow.com? Oh. Um, where do you want to dest uh, put the destination? You can actually choose the speed that it's going to write to the real media logs. So you can say, I'm going at 56K. Meanwhile, you're ripping at like 200K. Um, and it will give you the best file. Um, you can queue files. That's the coolest thing because I actually uh, was <laughs> talking to somebody when I was stealing their media. And uh, they were going to look out for me. So I'm like, okay, go ahead. And after like 9 o'clock, I would start my queue. So by the time I woke up in the morning, because I know he's probably sleeping too. <laughs> so like I just keep on downloading every night and I got like a whole archive. <laughs> um, how are we going to fight this? Okay. It, there are some problems about this. It does take some thought. Um, 
Real Media Log doesn't. It, it, Real doesn't log until you disconnect from it. It, it sends like a TCP session, um, saying, "Okay, this guy's done. This is how long he watched the video." So once um, once you watched it, you're in their logs, and then they can disconnect you. And uh, one of the ways to <clears throat> you can try this. I mean, go up to defcon.org to their media archives. Try using Stream Ripper. You might get in there once, and then you'll be banned because uh, they're, they're going to look for all your info. Um, basically, there's ways to hide files from Streambox and stuff like that. A company that I work for, Digital Club Network, they actually started working with Tomcat and doing stuff through SQL. You, it's really hard to work through that. Plus, if you have ADD like me, you'll probably be like, I'm bored, shiny blue thing, you know? <laughs> So, like, I, I'm not into, like, the long haul with, like, streaming media. Um, <laughs> what's the signature of Streambox? Um, basically, Streambox writes its own real player version. Um, I don't know if you can change this. Like, again, it's hex editing you have to get in, like, and maybe change the signature. But basically, it's going to write that it's Streambox. It's going to say real media, but if you know Streambox, you know, you know the version of real player it's going to put there. Windows Media. All right, first of all, <laughs> it, connecting the internet with your desktop is probably the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> I don't care if you want to put active content on your desktop, that's just, it seems retarded. Because you can use MMS slash slash in a lot of applications, like video editing programs. You could actually take a video, like you know it's streaming from an MMS, MMS server, put it into like a, a video converter. Um, what I included with my talk is uh, Stoic, and um, you can like just convert it to an AVI file on the fly from the media server. It's so wrong. You like feel dirty when you're done. You go to the shower and you're like, oh, I gotta get clean. Um, so, but it, it comes with Windows 2000. Um, like when I installed it, it doesn't require any configuration. So right there off the bat, you know it's not secure. I mean, if you don't have to configure it, that means everyone has the same. Um, and it doesn't log like. I, I've seen like old grandmothers go in the forest and log better than <laughs> Windows Media. Um, okay, this is Stoic. All right, this is a screenshot from my desktop. As you can see, it's kind of like small, but um, yeah, that's coming from stream.techtv.com, and uh, I saved it to like an AVI file. Um, basically, I got this pop-up window, right? And you're like, oh, let's put pop-up windows for players, not so we can advertise all over it. Um, but basically, you just have to siphon this HTML, look for like the embed tag, and you're gonna find the MMS URL. I mean, it's right there. Uh, <laughs> it's not that hard. It's like, oh, duh, uh, graphic, graphic, advertisement, MMS stream, you know? So once you find that, you plug that into Stoic. <laughs> and then once it's in Stoic, you can actually choose <laughs> what codec you want. Like, so you could change it into Windows Media file, or you could choose, like, you know, AVI file. You could do whatever. You can, like, enhance colors. Really cool. And it's a free program. Um, ASFR. This is supposedly ASFR Recorder. I wanted to cover this because I thought it worked. Um, it doesn't work very well. What happens is um, it's basically a WGET for uh, HTTP and MMS. Um, it supports Chinese, Japanese, and Korean characters in it, which I thought was cool, but I don't speak any of those languages either. So the fact that like, you could put it in there, all right, right. features. Um, it, it'll fix all this stuff. It, like, it'll basically log a resume file, so if you ever get disconnected, it'll still resume. Really cool stuff in it, but all my like, data files I downloaded actually came like, corrupted. So I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong. I mean, like, Windows is really tricky, so I don't know. Uh, but basically, you, could, you bring up ASFR <clears throat> in a file, and just like this, like, like a W get, and stream, blah, 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 blah. And once you, oops, sorry. Oh, man. All right. Basically, um, when, you get, when you W get it, it gives you an image like this, like just like W get or uh, link stump or something. It tells you the percentage that's coming down. Um, doesn't work very well. You can try it at home. Tell me what, if you can get it to work, then email me and go, you're stupid. <laughs> um, how do you protect this stuff from like being stolen from Windows Media? Maybe proxying it? Um, I talked about ideas about sequential files. 
because when I go through a site, I'm going to pretty do it like sequentially. I'm going to go one file, one file, one file, one file. If I saw that on my Windows Media Server, I'd think, hey, someone's stealing. No one watches video, 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 video. They're going to watch video, Britney Spears, you know, whatever. Um, three, or I'm just ADD, you know? <laughs> so, like, I won't be able to just video sequentially. Um, let's see. Oh, basically, this was me trying to grab from my home media server the upgrade video. I was seeing if it actually played on the system. Then I went to go looking through my logs. Mm. That's just the admin program. Hmm, it must be in this log. No. How about this one? No. You're good, Windows. All right. Um, when you go through the help file going, hey, where's my logs? It has a help file like this, and it tells you what it logs. Nowhere on here says the player. It just tells you when people are connected and what their IP is. Like, big deal. I could do that with a sniffer. I could do that with anything, an IDS. But, um, Basically, Windows doesn't do crap. Um, how to grab MP3s. MP3 files are really cool. And the fact that I just stumbled upon this. I didn't even look for it. Um, you could basically steal MP3s from Shoutcast, which really pisses off Internet people. Um, <laughs> like, you could do it with, like, inside Winamp. Um, you could only do it in certain versions of Winamp. And um, Winamp 3 really isn't that great anyway. And that's Winamp if you've never seen it before, you Napster people. <laughs> there was this plugin that was developed for, uh, for uh, uh, Winamp. Basically, it was Disk Writer and File Writer. Um, no one really used these that much. And what you would do is actually en enable it. And instead of having wave output, it would actually write to your disk. So if you're connected to the, you know, the internet and listening to like some great radio station, you're going to actually write that to your drive. And it's really cool. Uh, basically, File Writer has this kind of config where you can actually choose what kind of file format you want to write in. Um, you can actually config it pretty well, too. Um, basically, there's this other program, Stream Saver. It was eh, it was okay. It was, uh, I just tried it out just because I thought I needed another program to steal with. Um, it's really simple. You know, uh, you can try it out on the disk. Um, okay, this was the bad news. I was crying when I heard this. Uh, they, Winamp corrected the disk writing thing. They realized that people out like me were out on the internet stealing from Shoutcast servers. So they said, okay, we're going to write a little plug in there so it doesn't let people steal from Shoutcast. Good news, Stream Ripper came out. <laughs> So basically, you can, this is a SourceForge project. You could actually load this up next to your, real pl or your Winamp, play the song through Wave, and also write it to the disk at the same time. And it's really good. Um, it, 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 the only problem I found is it really loads all the time when you load up Winamp, and you're like, I don't want to steal. I just want to listen to Justin. Um, so Basically, this is Stream Ripper. Like I said, it like, has this little pop-up next year. And it doesn't even go. Come on, how unfashionable is that? Um, this is another program, FreeAmp. <laughs> this is really good, too. It's free. And actually um, has config to write to the disk. And then also has, like, hey, save Shoutcast streams locally. Well, that's convenient. <laughs> I don't know how they get away with it, but, you know. Um, XMS, if you use Linux, this will work too. As you can see, I like have the files down there. Like, it has the right there at the bottom output plugin, and you basically write it to the disk. The only problem I have experienced with this is if your internet stream buffers, or if you're like, you can't do this on modem. Basically, you have to have a high speed stream. Uh, it will have some problems, uh, but programs like. Uh, Freeamp will actually split when it hears silence, so it'll actually make tracks for you. <laughs> it's just so cool. Um, how do we protect MP3 streaming? Well, if you put it on a page, you know, you got to watch out because someone could siphon your HTML and see like just links, or they could see the M3U files or something like that. Again, you could use like HT Access. HT Access is really cool because you, you're like superior and you can think of your big admin going, I don't want you to see my content. What are you going to give me? Um, disk writing and file plugins don't work, so that like limits um, some of the, the hackers that are going to come hit your site. 
but basically it's if you're going to run a streaming media server you you got to get into like it's a server you got to understand like servers need security and if you don't have security i'm going to be like haha i got your baby pictures or you know like stupid stuff like that or like you know getting video of you know you and your husband or, you know so you got to like protect the servers and watermarking is like really good. Um, security through obscurity is sort of a solution. Um, when you want to decide um, on the security, uh, or basically decide on the streams, you want to decide on what kind of security. How much are you willing to invest in this? Um, by like just putting a streaming server up, if it, you don't have to configure it, it's probably really a bad idea. Um, Basically, I think that's all I have. I have like lots of links, so like hopefully this goes out on the web and stuff. But basically, all the links that I kind of went through. Um, and if anyone has questions, because I bet there's a lot of them, um, we can go through questions. Go. Uh, okay. From Rhapsody. Yeah. Um, how are you playing it from Rhapsody? I would use a sniffer on Windows and basically follow the HTML stream. Sometimes they'll use cookies, so you could fake the cookie by writing it into a file. But uh, basically, uh, that's what I would do. I'd actually use like Iris or something, because Iris will actually list the file name, and you could probably click on that and download it. Huh? No. They don't write it like in a, a format that it'll understand. You're, you have to edit that file. Like you have to snip it at the hex. You gotta like hex edit it basically. It depends on the program that you actually encode it with. There's different types of watermarking. You could even impose a logo on it if you want. You can you can do that through different programs. Like they all cost a lot of money if you do that kind of stuff. Like um, there's but there's four different uh, companies who actually invest in watermarking technologies. Now most watermarking technologies often only work on one platform. They like oh, will only work for Windows or they'll only work for Mac. I haven't seen any watermarking technologies that go cross platforms. I don't know them offhand. <laughs> go ahead. No. Well, I'm sure you could do that with Stoic as well, because um, Stoic does let you confirm. Uh, confer you know, like convert the video, and you could actually keep it as Windows Media and strip out a lot of stuff. Also, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, um, like I did for. Digital Club Network, we actually did a, like a SQL server to have all the media on, and that fed the media through Tomcat. And basically, you could not get to the back end. I still, like to this day, I try to get in and figure out where it's coming from, but they're naming all their files like ID numbers with hashes and stuff like that. That gets really boring when you have to write stuff down. So uh, I, I don't do that stuff. Like, uh, I, that's the most secure way. That kept me out. I, I would do something like that. It takes a lot of administration doing like uh, like SQL admin. I hate SQL stuff, so but that's the easiest way to do it to hide videos. Um. That's what I would do. 
Oh, you can you can do it with like certain programs like um, what have I been using? Uh, TPMG or no, the uh, Tsunami MPEG encoder. Um, that will actually uh, strip down MPEGs. And it, you can move it to a, like a, a MPEG one or an MPEG two if you want, or MPEG four. You can do anything you want in it. I haven't seen it down to AVI, but. Um, I, I wouldn't want to put anything to AVI unless I was going to convert it into something else. Um, once it's MPEG, it's pretty good. Um, and if you want to encode it in real, I'm sure their newest encoder will do MPEG too, so you can convert it into the real player. The, the the real player encoder is actually free for what uh, streaming web format. Um, they have little like uh, purchase plans for like the other plugs. You know, like you can only do two speeds or something like that. But if you're just going to run a website at, like 80k or something like that, um, I would just use Real Player because it's pretty light and a lot of platforms can use it. Um, there's a lot of info there. <laughs> um, I, I don't know which way you want me to approach this right now. Oh. Uh, how they're doing their digital rights management? <laughs> um, real networks, what they were doing when I was trying to do digital rights man management was they actually had a third party come in and do the digital rights management. And it was token based, but you know, like I haven't seen anyone do that in a long time. Do digital rights management with real video. I don't use real one. I've never used real one, um, and that's not because like I, I don't have the energy. It's I don't feel like paying twenty dollars just to even experience real one. I, I think that's really wrong. Um, I don't understand where it's like it turned into adult check, you know, for news sites. It's true, and it's bloated, and you can't really like. It's weird interface. Um, it it doesn't work on Linux, um, but the I haven't seen any improvements in the real one player except for the MPEG4 stuff. That was really cool. Like I could actually do that, but I haven't been able to find that like auto size kind of feature that re the other real players had, where it was like borderless. Um, that was really cool, and I can't do it in real that real player. So, but um. Any more questions? Yeah. See, uh, we looked at that, and you can do like I mean that's it, going really low level. Like you can actually hook up a sound card and like plug it into a DAT tape. And um, we looked at like actually on a Linux box, Optics was really smart with this, and he actually uh, was telling me that you can actually get it off the disk and stuff like that. But Hey, if it's right out there, you know, with these tools, that's laziness. You know, like, just go for the tools instead. People worked hard creating those streaming, you know, stealing tools for you. <laughs> yeah, and it's actually inc included with my presentation. And uh, there's actually examples and stuff like that also. Any more questions? Okay, I think I'm going to get out of here. Uh, if anyone wants to find me, I don't look like, ooh, get that out of here. Um, basically, that's my email address. Uh, I also am moloch.org, moloch.tv, tommy.net. And uh, you'll probably see me uh, stumbling around later. So, thanks.